Okay, if you're watching on YouTube, we're just waiting for the troops to show up. We're going to mess with the Marker Maker by Crayola today. Woohoo! Got some Jane Davenport inks. Hi, Kenny. You're the first one here. I'm just, I was just talking to the YouTube crowd before you got here. Because I know it's weird if you go back and you watch the video on YouTube that there's, I don't know how many minutes of silence at the beginning. So, hi, Melody. Hi, C. Do it, do it, do it. I'm going to do it, do it, do it. Hi, Kimberly. Yeah, this is the, the crazy little kit that I bought. I didn't know it did the wacky tips. So, I don't know how many of them are going to have wacky tips. I really didn't want wacky tips. But one thing I will do is if I want a tip, I will take apart my um, super tips <laughs> and get a tip from there. Hey, Elaine. How are you? Hi, Joan. Hi, Kat. Hi, Josie and Linda. Everybody's coming in. Notification went out, apparently. You're doing good. Good. That's good. Uh, we are, too. Robert, um, I'll repeat this in a minute, that we went for... Robert's checkup yesterday, and it was good again. The numbers just keep kind of, they're not necessarily improving enormously, but they're holding their own. So, um, and this is one of the tests that will <clears throat> be sent off for further testing. So, yeah, just keeping our fingers crossed. But, yeah, it's going good so far. So, I'm going to put this aside because I have to show my new glasses. I got my new glasses yesterday, too. Here you go, Dee Dee. Here's the nerd glasses. But they're really cool because they've got really pretty green on the inside. And they're small because, as crazy as this sounds, I chose the youth frames and they fit so much better. So, yeah, I'm really happy with them. The problem is I had them do it for when I'm arting because that's usually my biggest problem. But now I can't read the computer. Hi, Teresa. I'm going to show you your stuff here in a minute. And anybody I missed, Dorothy, um, Joan, I said hi to Joan. So, yeah, it's been a good couple of days. Went shopping, went to Robert's doctor, ate like pigs. I did not get bifocals, Dee Dee. Um, I don't necessarily need them because my vision um, from about... Mm, I'm going to say four to five feet is pretty much 2020. It's only far away and close up. So, yeah. <clears throat> Hi, G Brody. So, no, I didn't get the bifocals because I don't wear my glasses all the time. But the thing is, I can always go order a second pair. And that was kind of my plan going in. And Hollywood, Robert Vaughn, he ordered up two pairs and sunglasses and he just yeah he ordered up everything so yeah I like the glasses a lot too and they I just like them because they fit so darn good um yeah so I'm a pinhead and youth glasses fit me perfectly so Dee, Dee this morning I'm gonna pull this camera down um when you were doing the pit marker thing and um didn't know if they were waterproof. I thought, well, we'll just do an experiment here so that we can see. Yes, Didi, when I put them on, it was just like, holy crap, I love this. I It was just like, looking here at about 13, 12 to 13 inches, everything is just perfect. So I'm happy. So what I did, I didn't have the full set that Didi had. I had this set that had X, XS is actually my favorite um, marker for a fine, fine, fine tip. So I use this marker a lot, the XS. Um, <clears throat> and then I had these at the Hobby Lobby sale. So I went ahead and did the four that I had. And I did this at 9 a.m. So we're going to see if um, the length of time that you let it dry has anything to do. I know the excess will not move. So, um, and hi to everybody coming in. Hi, Norma. Hi, Zoe. 
Hey, Eileen finally showed up. We're going to do the markers here in a minute. We're going to do Dee Dee's waterproof test on the pit markers first. So, um, yeah, on the excess, that bad boy is not moving at all. And I, this is pretty juicy, this water brush. So, and this is just on copy paper like Dee Dee was doing. The S did not move. It did not smudge nothing. Yeah, they appear to me, Dee Dee, to be pretty darn waterproof. I think the problem was um, they weren't having a, a good chance to sit. Um, and then I went ahead and got the, the colored ones out as well. And they are, I knew they were waterproof because I'd done tests on them before. So I think just let them sit for a little while, Dee Dee, because none of these are moving. I'm not even getting a hint of color movement. So I think it's safe to say that the pit pens, when they say they're waterproof, they are waterproof. Okay, I'm going to do pop out chat real quick. I haven't done that yet. So there you go, Dee Dee. I'm feeling confident that your pens are going to be waterproof. Um, you might try like doing your, the ones that have a bolder tip, do those and let them sit for a couple hours before you water them. And then see, but these I'm pretty certain you hit it with the heat gun. Yeah. And I don't think, um, <clears throat> I don't think that let it set well enough because if I, I'm almost sure that pit are India ink, I'm almost positive they are. I'm looking on the packaging to see. And they're just packaged different ways. Like this is um, for the manga. They call it a manga set. But they're the same pens that are in anything else. I think they just sell them for marketing purposes that way. Yeah, pigmented India ink. Maximum light fastness, waterproof, permanent, odorless, acid-free, pH neutral, for nibs. So, yeah. I think your pens, you're going to find that you love them. I love the pit pens. Yeah, Teresa just said they are. So I think the India ink absorbs into the paper a bit more and needs more drying. Yeah, so I think if you let it sit, you won't have any problem with smearage. Don't tell Cam that or you'll have to give him the whole set. Because you may owe him like maybe for a lifetime for that little faux pas. Your heat gun has never let you down. Oh, Dee Dee, I hate to burst your bubble, girl. Doesn't Debbie smear the pit pens? I think that's the trick, Eileen. If you want them to smear, and I've seen um, another YouTuber put them on and then smear them, but you've got to do it pretty quick. And then after they dry fully, then they're permanent. So Dee Dee put water on them, you know, shortly after. And she had a couple that were real bold, <clears throat> put down a lot of ink. I just don't think they had a chance to really set up. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is Happy Mail. Um, well, not really Happy Mail. We're going to do a Tuesday morning haul. And I'll show you what Teresa got at Tuesday morning. It's still in my bag. And Teresa, I jumbled all this stuff up, so I hope I got get your stuff right. <clears throat> Teresa got the um, Dina Wakely People Stamps, the Silhouette People. Um, I don't know how many they had, a couple. You wanted the dog and the cat, right? I, I've almost bought this one, I don't know how many times, and I still didn't buy it for myself. You have to smear them on a medium, I think. That could be true too, Dee Dee. <clears throat> yeah, on matte medium, they sm may smear more. <clears throat> yeah, the only pen I found that is actually totally waterproof on almost everything I've ever tried it on is this microperm, Sakura makes it. Um, and it says permanent on most surfaces. But this is the only pen I found that absolutely will write on anything and is permanent on anything. 
And believe me, I own every pen in the world, I think. I'm pretty sure. So that's, Teresa got this. Yep. You need to fly to Tuesday morning. Um, she wanted the Dilution stencil. So she got that. Um, we both got one of these, the Heidi Swap with the heart. And then um, I'm going to say I'll open it for you. You get the, the stencil of the heart. You get the stencil of the design. These are two pieces. And then you get the mask of the heart as well. You've never been to a Tuesday morning? Well, if you have any good sense, you'll just stay the hell out of there. <laughs> you're heading to Jet Pens? It's a good pen, Didi. You will not be disappointed. And while you're ordering, get um, Cam one, too. They're good pens. In fact, I found out about this microperm one from Kathy Arbor is the one who told me about this. And I did not, I was not disappointed even for a second after I bought it. Okay, now, Teresa, this is where I'm, I get kind of confused. You wanted these stencil minis, right? And here's the, I, I meant to go back and pick up one of these for myself but i didn't so but i think she wanted these and i don't really care i can live without them so um yeah the heidi swap stencil minis i think these were also Teresa's. so and then i don't yeah this one i bought for me i think this is what i ended up doing this is amy tangerine and these are mini stencils i'm going to open this because um the reason I really bought it was because I love that flower there and I like that little one there. So let's just look at them. The words I could care less about. This neat, fun, sweet, love, I could care less about that. But I like this one. I thought that would look really pretty with um, um, texture medium. You know what I'm talking about. And I like this one. I cut one much like this myself, only much larger. So um, this could be a lettering guide. It's so awesome. Actually, Patty had used a stencil like this the other day, and I thought, oh, that would be really useful. And there's some chevrons and some triangles. So that one I picked up for me. And then also for me, um, I bought their story stickers. Um, Teresa said she didn't want these. Um, I probably could have lived without them, frankly, but I know they're 20 bucks at Hobby Lobby and Michael's and they're only six at Tuesday morning. So, what'd you say that you wanted me to read? Elaine, I missed it. So that was mine. That was mine. I did find just one of the dilutions. Laugh till you leak. It just makes it funnier. Um, mostly I just sit around all day being fabulous. That's why I bought this entire thing. Mostly I just sit around all day just being fabulous. <laughs> We are all a little broken, but broken crayons still color. Life is hard. Your art shouldn't be. Life is a zoo. Never feed the monkeys. That's a good one, too. I like that. Um, Ugh, people. That's definitely me. My brain has too many tabs open. Ask my kids. They know everything. I can't say that about my kids. Maybe Koki when he was younger, but that's not really good on me. I'm a rainbow sprinkle. I'm a rainbow sprinkle in a vanilla world. I'm a rainbow. I don't know about that. I can hardly wait to regret this. So, yep. I don't know how much this says they were originally 10 bucks and I got it for four. So, and then this one, the bow bunny one, there was only one of these as well. Um, laugh till you leak. It just take, makes it funnier. <laughs> But these I thought would be fun with the foil, Eileen. Can you believe that I was, um, yeah, it does, Elaine. They've really revamped that whole craft section. So you're going to have to drive your butt over here 
and um, we'll go. But I thought these, believe it or not, Eileen, believe it or not, I thought, well, those would look really cool with the foil on them. The, like um, Xander did where she put the glue on the stamp and then foiled it. And I did play with some more with it. What did I do with it? Um, I did play some more with the foil after we were done the other day. Um, and that's where I just wrote my initials and then put the foil on. And it definitely just comes out very distressed. And then do you guys want to see my watercolor that I was sitting here, Robert and I were sitting here watching the, um, which ones do you want, Jean? The circle ones. So I'll put Teresa's stuff aside right now. Well, I know what's hers. So my best to get that out of this house this week. I want your... Those circle swirly ones. Yeah, I just looked at this and thought it's not the sort of stamp I would normally buy, but then that foil thing jumped in my head. I like the Bow Bunny stamps. They had some kind of cutesy um, Bow Bunny. Um, Monique, are you crazy? She just asked me, are you going to get a Timmy Splatter Shield? Yeah, I'm going to run right out and get one of those bad boys today. But I thought these, yeah. These could be very useful. So there we go. We own that. Now, the rat and I were sitting here last night watching the news and stuff after we got home. And I um, I had gotten my Amazon box. And you guys are going to think I'm loco cuckoo. But both Xander and Paula had shown these crazy little watercolor sets. And I thought, okay, um, I'm buying them. So I went ahead and got the pastel and the... Um, just the, the, all the colors. I don't know how many are in here. There's 42 in this set, 18 in this one. But the crazy thing is you don't get really get, um, I have a different address now. Okay. Yeah, I, I will, Teresa. I'm not worried about it. We'll, we'll get it figured out. I don't know if you were waiting for me last night, but by the time we got home, I was ready just to gel. And plus I was full because we ate like pigs. So, but I have the receipt right here so we can get it taken care of. So anyway, while we were sitting here watching the news and just hanging out, I started watercoloring with my new little watercolor sets, which I like these. You have these and you love them. I like them too. They're not chalky. They're not the least bit chalky. That's the pastel set right there. Um, and so then I started thinking about for Dee Dee's, um, challenge that I would like to do desserts you know and I, I have the boxes in my book already drawn and I did it in my little watercolor book so I can't fit a bunch of them and I'm going to probably work on it later on today who knows I've got so much stuff I want to play with how do I know but see the pages are ready so I've only got eight that I have to do um but I thought oh desserts would be really fun so does that look, what do you guys, tell me what you guys think that looks like. What does that look like? And I'm not saying that it's great or anything, but what is, what does that look like? And it, they didn't have great grounds. I will say that. It looks like chocolate. Thank you, Jean. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's um, a piece of brownie that had um, frosting on it and then the ice cream. The ice cream was hard. Oh, my God. The ice cream was so hard. So, yeah, I'm going to need somebody to give me a tutorial on um, ice cream because that was really hard. Beats me, Eileen. You're such a whatever. I can't say anything bad about Eileen. Her boyfriend just walked in the door. Okay. And then I just sat here and decided to start painting fruit. So we got, but these are all done with this little paint set here. Um, and these, I think they're, I didn't finish the strawberry. So don't look at the strawberry, but I'm really happy with them. And I've got a long way to go. 
on watercolors, but my favorite out of this whole thing is either the kiwi. I love the kiwi. And I like the orange slice. So I'm slowly learning. I did, you know, I wasn't sure about um, watercolors. I really wasn't. But yeah, I, I think, did you get the watercolors? I got them from Amazon, Teresa. Um, he walked in and went right down to his man cave. So I don't know. He's on a mission, I guess. So, um, Jean, you, I'm about ready to agree with you that I'm, I'm really enjoying these watercolors. I, I felt, and I still feel, I mean, I, I don't know at what point I'm going to feel like, oh man, you can do this. Um, they're so different than markers or anything else I've ever done. Um, I did it from a picture, Kia. Yeah, I, I use reference. I don't trust my, um, imag or my, yeah, my imagination, I guess. So that was what I was just sitting here doing. What was this? Oh, that's on the back of Xandra's receipt. So, yeah, so I kind of have a list of desserts that I'm going to um, try and paint in my little book. So that's that. And then the only other thing I got from Amazon in my last order was, and I don't know who to blame for this. Oh, the reason we can't talk to Robert. Thank you, Teresa. Um. I don't know who to blame for this. He's got headphones on, so he can't hear a word I'm saying. Um, is I bought this book, Draw Your Day. And it could have been Paula's fault that I got this one. But it is a nice little book. It really is. So I could actually use this to do the, you know, just use her uh, as inspiration to finish off the DD challenge, but I'm definitely going to finish the DD challenge. Oh, look at that. Oh, I like that pretzel. Where did, where did that go? I like the chocolate covered pretzel. So I'm going to give it a go, even though I'm not, you know, my confidence level is not right up there, but I'm going to give it a go anyway. Do some on ATC's watercolor paper. That's a good idea, Dee Dee. Hey, Joycey. You go get busy doing your laundry. Hi, Joey. That's why I'm streaming today because um, Joycey doesn't want to overdo and she's got to get her laundry done today. But it, I was going to stream some point anyway because I know I love those chocolate. You like, I do like to work small. And actually, I've got some... Um, some found relatives um, in progress. I'll grab them real quick. They're just sitting here half done. Earlier, I'll put this aside again because I just have so much to talk about. These were the found relatives that I did back when Barb was doing her um, found relatives. So I was going to do the fibs. Now, Keep in mind, I don't know what any of the fibs really look like, except maybe like a photo for your icon or whatever, or if I follow you on Facebook or something. But these were so much fun. Um, doing these with Barb. So I went ahead and I had a piece of B paper. So I went ahead and I've started doing some others where you just do the blobs of ink. So at some point, I've got to finish these. Um, but I'm going to turn them into the fibs. What were the brand of watercolors? Um, Melody, I, what do they call them? I guess the name would just be Superior. They're definitely Chinese made. But really, I like them. They don't feel the least bit chalky or anything. Yeah. And they come with the water brush. On the big one, you get a great big hairy water brush. And on the little one, you get a little tiny baby one. And then there's a, um, a piece of foam up here that I guess is kind of it where you can wipe for your travel kit. So, yeah, these are going to be turned into fibs um, at some point. 
I bet you guys can't guess what, who this one is. <laughs> so, yep, I'm going to be working on these. They're a fun thing to do. So, what was I up to next? We're going to do the marker maker, okay? And the reason I got this is, one, J Jane Davenport did this herself. She had a different marker maker, though. It was blue. So I don't know if the Aussie one is just different or whatever. But you guys remember that my niece got me these Jane Davenport inks. And I find them hard to use in this bottle. I've used them a few times. Hi, Julie. Um, and I like having the liquid ink. But I think for my purposes, having them in a marker um, is going to be far more useful. So that's why I decided, okay, if it's good enough for Jane Davenport, damn it, it's good enough for me. That's it. So I'm opening the box, and I'll show you all the junk you get in this box. And I think I paid $13 for this, you guys. Were they full? These bottles, yes, they were full. I think for the most part, yeah, they were pretty much full. The ones that yours weren't full? Yeah, these, I mean, I've used these, Dee, Dee and you can see how full it is. It's up to at least the label, but it had to be higher than that because I've used them. All right, here's all the tubes and the tips and the felt inserts and the caps. So you get a bunch of those. And I think this is designed to make 16 or 18 markers. Two marker boxes, two measuring tubes, 16 marker part. Yeah, so this is to make 16 markers. And then they give you the, um, <clears throat> excuse me, red, yellow, and blue, which with these three colors, ideally you should be able to make every other color in the rainbow, correct? So... They give you those three bottles of ink, and I'm sure it's all water-based and washable. And the rest of this crap I probably don't need in this box. So I don't know what this is. Hmm. What the hell? Hope they have good instructions in here. Of course, if a six-year-old could do it, Tell Dee Dee how they smell. Yeah, I don't like the scents, Dee Dee. Um, maybe some people do. But all of these Jane Davenport inks have scents. Like this one's watermelon. But I'm I'm scent sensitive. Um, you need that to seal the markers. Well, look at Eileen knowing this stuff that I don't know. All right. So this is a handy-dandy Crayola tool that I'm going to need, I guess. And then this big honking thing. Check it out. This looks space age. Like, don't you think this looks totally space age? All right, let's see how we open it. I should have done this so Eileen can't make fun of me later. Because <laughs> she will. I know she will. You saw the video? Did she... Did they show you how to open up this cool little thing here? Oh, okay. I hope I didn't break it here. That comes out like that. This was on the side, like this. Okay, so I took this off, and then this flips open. Oh, my gosh. This is like chemistry. This is like being back in college. There's my little measuring tubes, which I think are going to fit right in here. Jane Davenport spilled it. I'm hoping I don't. I should have put, like, something down on the floor. All right, and you can, it looks like you can slide it. Yeah, so that they don't tip over easy. There's, like, a little lock that it slides into, okay? They don't lock down real great, but there we go. Yeah, they're in there sturdy. They had to make it cool for kids, mad scientist stuff. I guess so. Um, didn't you tell Janet to watch the video? I watched it and will never even buy it. I did watch the video, but Janet and she didn't read instructions. I'm going to read the, the instructions. 
Okay, Robert's only lived here about 20 years and he's looking for a rubber band. He doesn't know where we keep the rubber bands. And he's got headphones on, so he can't hear a word I'm saying anyway. Go over in that drawer on the right-hand side. Okay. And there's a bunch over there. No, I'm going to read the instructions. Are you kidding? Get Roxy close by to catch the mess. Oh, you guys. Um, this composure stuff for the cat, this is the greatest stuff on earth, honestly. I want to keep her on it. No, really. If you, uh, if you have a crazy cat, and oddly enough, now I don't know, how, I'm going to call the vet and see if this is even possible, but she is a horribly picky eater. Um, Roxy is, I mean, I open a can of food, she'll eat it once, and then the next time she'll walk away from it. She won't. I do drug my cat, only it's all natural, baby. Totally natural. Because my vet is, um, and Jan, I love you if you watch this. She's kind of a tree hugger, and she just believe, believes um, in all natural stuff. She gave this to her mother, so it's it's good enough for my cat. Um, but she's such a picky eater, and since she's been taking that stuff, maybe it's like pot. <laughs> you know, she gets the munchies or something. I don't know. But honestly, she has not turned her noise nose up at her food once and elaine knows that cat needs drugs trust me she gave it to her mother well, um it's they make a people version of it you guys <laughs> elaine tell them i'm not lying um they make a people version of it hippie cat on pot i know now oh my god where have i gotten myself into all right, here's the setup. You're going to see the whole thing. Align tabs on handle with indents on each side of post at rear of caddy. Snap handle onto post. All right. Got the, I think I've got it the wrong way. Okay, so here's the handle, I think, unless it's that other one. Sure, sure. D O M G. <laughs> but she's been eating really, really good. Did we try it one day? I don't know. Hurry, Patty, hurry. Hi, by the way. <laughs> we may have. Mary, there were days Mary needed it too. She's picky but wants food all the time. These are tweezers. Okay. These are the tweezers, I guess. I don't know. I'm probably not going to use them anyway, so what the hell. All right, is this the handle that they're talking about putting in here? No, maybe. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> yeah, this is what they're talking about putting in there. Okay, I'm going to have to take this off camera to do this. She is eating now. She is eating really good now. So I'm not going to keep this big honking red thing anyway. So if it breaks, we don't care. We just want some ink and damn pens. That's it. That's all we want. And a six-year-old couldn't do this. I'm sorry. All right. Yeah, you have to push. You have to push big time on that, okay? But look at it. This is getting more space, space age by the minute. Push buttons on each side of the caddy and lift unit to release bottom tray and set aside. What? Oh, okay. I already did that. Lift handle out of clip and flip it straight back. Okay. Pull mixing tray forward and lay flat. That's this, and we've done that. Um, pull lids apart until each half rests flat on the work surface. Well, they're not laying flat on the work surface. Oh, wait. Maybe I, there's something else i got to remove here. Okay. Here. Now they're going to lay flat. There's something on the bottom here that you have to take out. Okay. There we go. Now they're laying flat. 
damn, some engineer at Crayola made a million bucks, I'm sure, for doing this. So that it can end up in my trash can. All right, we took this off. We'll find out what we're doing with that later. Um, pull it apart. I did that. Marker parts and ink bottles will be inside. Oh, I already pulled those out. Press one nib into the narrow end of a marker barrel. Let's see what we got going on here now. Okay, so let's look at all the different parts. Here's, I think this is the marker barrel. This is the felt guts that will end up inside there. I'm not gonna push it down because I may never get it out again. Um, so let's see. And there should be, oops, broke the package. And I think there should be 16 of these. So, Yeah, this takes up way too much world room in my world. But we'll let them hold that right there. Looking, looking, looking. Making sure I got all these. All right, and then there's a bunch of caps. I don't know what this thing is, but we're gonna it's we're gonna put it aside. And then there's <clears throat> should be sixteen of these as well. So we'll stand those up in one of the little compartments here. And then here's the, I hope I got some regular nibs because I don't want to have to <laughs> She'll go, I don't care. As long as she bought the inks, what do I care? All right, and then all the lids. Let's see what kind of nibs we got, because that's really what I'm more interested in. Yeah, these are some wacky nibs. So I'm going to have Jane Davenport pens with wacky nibs. Woohoo! All right. Package is empty. Yeah, I'm going to have wacky nibs. I don't really care, though. Okay, there's two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. There's only fourteen. What the heck? Did they rip me off? Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen. All right, I better count again. Yeah, there's only 15 nibs in here. Well, that's a bummer. That's okay, because I only got like 11 inks, so I could care less. Was this thing intended for kids? Denise, that hello... I believe it was. I don't know what the box said for kids, what and up. I may not even qualify to be doing this, for God's sakes. Not for children under three years. <laughs> and then what else came in the box? Okay, you've got a box, a foldable box that you can put your handy-dandy little markers in after you get them all done. And then they've got labels, which are glossy, which are not going to work well anyway. And a marker maker color mixing guide. So that's what comes in the box. Okay. You need Roxy's catnip. <laughs> I am a nibbless person. 
<laughs> I am. I'm not sure, Dee Dee, if I'm qualified to do this or not, but we're going to find out. And if I'm ordering carpet next month, you're going to know. No, she wasn't qualified. All right. So let's see what the instructions say. Oh, and I found my eraser that I've been missing. It was in with the pens. Choose a marker color from the mixing guide, the number and the letter. We're not going to do that. I did place the um, measuring tubes in the mixing trays. Carefully pour each color ink into a tube. Example, the formula under the aqua color is 9B plus 6 yellow. I think B and Y is blue and yellow. Add blue ink up to the 9 fill line and then add yellow. Well, we're not going to do all that stuff right now. Using tweezers, gently lower a core into the measuring tube. I'm not going to do that either. Allow core to sit until all ink is absorbed. Okay, we can do this, you guys. We can do this. We'll start with the watermelon color it's kind of watermelonish color check your driver's license to make sure yeah i got youth frames no i did not download the jane davenport i'll just um use some label material all right i'm kind of thinking i mean if they're saying use nine of the blue and six of the yellow to fill up that, um, I mean, this is going to use a lot of the ink, but if it makes the pens usable, I'm all for that. So, and if there's any left, I'll just put it back in the bottle. All right. Now, you take these little felt guts, and I don't want it to overflow, so I'm going to go kind of slow. Yeah, it's letting itself sink. Well, now, isn't that special? Can you guys see it? You guys can't see it, but it's sucking up the ink into that um, felt or whatever it is that's in that tube. It's very squishy. Let me see. I don't, I, it's not really felt. I'm sure it's a petroleum product. She filled the whole thing up. Yeah, I filled it up to the, um, here, if you look at this, it's got like 15. If I need more, I'll just add more. But I filled it up to that 15. I kind of am that these locked down. <laughs> I kind of am. Now. It sucked up every bit of that ink. It really did. Up here, it's still kind of white, but you can tell it's kind of like a baby's diaper that this end down here is absolutely, totally saturated. So I think it will wick up to the whole thing. You don't think I watched the same video? I think I did. I watched Jane Davenport do it. <laughs> What's wrong with the way I'm doing it? I did it according, when measuring tube is empty, transfer core to the marker barrel, use tweezer to gently push core down into the barrel. Now I might want to use the tweezers for this. Insert the plug, close side up. These are the plugs that she's they're talking about. Here's the barrel. And then the nib is going to go in this end. So, um, I think if I turn this upside down because it's liquid, it's going to run down that way. All right. <laughs> Paul is going to love this. Oh, my God. Dee Dee and I are just shaking our heads. What have I done right? What have I done wrong? I think I did good. I don't think I goofed up. I am going to put just another drop of ink in there. Maybe a few drops. If they dry out, I'll just put more ink in. What the hell? All right. Now it says to put this in there. 
I am going to use this for that because I really don't want to get this. All right, you guys. I mean, I'm thinking to try my Sergeant Art in these. Jenna is rolling Smash Cat treats. <laughs> I haven't done anything right yet. Oh, my God. It did suck it up really fast. Okay. So um, then it says to put the little cap on. I think I'm doing it just right. I don't pull handle forward and press down firmly on the marker. You will hear two snaps. Make sure the plug and nib are fully inserted. Okay, I've got to put a nib in here. I've got to choose a nib for the watermelon. What color do we want watermelon? What kind of nib? Oops. We'll do this one, watermelon. All right. <laughs> All right. Yeah, see? And I'm supposed to put this in here. Oops, maybe not. Maybe I shouldn't do that first. <laughs> I wish you guys would point out what I'm screwing up because I don't, I'm not. I've followed every instruction so far. It hasn't been yet, but I did. Um, so tell me what I did wrong, Eileen. You only use the tampon wrapper and a paper. You guys have to read this chat. All right, let me see. I'm thinking... I have to believe that you want the cap on before you put it in there, wouldn't you? Maybe not. Because otherwise, I think you'd smush the... There, it snapped. Oh, my gosh, you guys. And then this just snaps on like a regular marker. Now, that this, the um, tube with the ink has now married up to the... And I can see the nib. Sucking down the liquid. So in just a minute, we're going to have watermelon colored ink. We're going to set this right there and let it just continue flowing down. I think for not reading all the instructions and Dee Dee and Eileen making so much fun of me, I did darn good. It does use a lot of ink. I will say that. You bought the dumb thing. <laughs> I wanted to use my Jane Davenport inks. All right. This is going to make Eileen happy. It's hard to make her happy, but I'm doing my best, okay? I am trying real hard here, Sharon. By, hi, by the way. I'm going to buy one and send it to Eileen. We're going to do the limeade green next. And then I'm going to have to wash these two. Anything you do... If you want to keep Eileen happy, just do it in green. And then she she's like a, a baby with a pacifier. If you give her her green ink, she'll go sit over in the corner now and behave perfectly. Try it first. Try them before I go on. Try the other marker first. All right. Well, it hasn't sucked down all the ink yet, but it's getting there. It takes gravity, man. It takes gravity. But it, the nib is, is filling up with the ink, so we're good. It's going to take just a minute. All right. Eileen's saying try it first. I think I need, I should have probably poured myself a drink, but I didn't want to be drunk at 2 o'clock in the afternoon. I think mine have different nibs. Um, yeah, Jean, before you order, just... Pay attention to the nibs. I would have rather had a bunch of regular nibs. Zoe, I was a hippie. Are you kidding? I was a child of the 70s. Hello. I See, Jean, you and I are the same. I wanted this. I wanted to try it with the Jane Davenport inks. Now, one thing, Jane, I did notice on the Jane Davenport video that I watched that Dee Dee and Eileen didn't watch. Um, the colors come out um, 
way lighter. Um, almost like they've been diluted. But I'm sure Jane Davenport didn't dilute them. They just um, um, they just come out lighter for whatever reason. Okay, the nib is getting very close to being right ready. Okay, we'll get a piece of paper. Where's the piece of paper? Oh, we still have the mushrooms here from the other day. We'll just use it on that. Okay, now I have wet ink out, so I've got to be careful. Or uncontained ink, I guess I should say. Yeah, see, Kimberly agrees with me. They're all different kind of nibs, and I wish I'd paid attention to that, but I don't care. If I'm sure they'll come out with different nibs where I could order something different or whatever, but yeah, they've got all different kinds of nibs. This one has a, like where you could do double calligraphy. Um, that's going to be a real broad tip. Here's a regular nib. The one I put in there is more like what you're going to see on the super tips. Um, there's one that looks like a fork. It's got four tips. So, and then there's a three tip one. Ooh, that one's going to be fun. So we'll just see. But the way I'm going to use them, it probably won't matter. Yeah, I like the shrooms too. I got these from um, Zandra's store. And Zandra's store, you can go online. Um, just type in paint and paper studio. And you'll go to Zandra's online shop. She has got some great stuff in there. Oh, my gosh. It was hard not to just hit put in cart, put in cart, put in cart. All right, here we go. Nib is ready. You know what? I'm going to try. I have to try this every time. I'm going to close this blind, put myself in the dark, but then maybe you guys can see. And if you missed the show on Monday, we did these. I got my Xander box. Um, and I tried that crazy foil that Eileen has been just harassing me about. Yeah, I tried the foil. And in case you're wondering, it was an epic fail. All right. So here we go. Yeah, these are working awesome. Just like any old regular marker. So now I've made the Jane Davenport inks usable in my world. It is much more muted than the, I'll put the, the full strength next to it. And who cares? It was 13 bucks. Can you do the markers without the felt? Um, I'm not sure what, you know what? I'm going to have extras. Eileen, we'll just waste one and find out. Okay, I put a drop of this, full strength, next to it. Um, I'll use some brush that I have over here that I left in water like a big dope. All right, so we'll just go ahead and I'll do the outer ring in the full strength so you can see. Actually, it's not that much lighter. The purple she did was way lighter. But this isn't that much lighter that I can see. Can you guys see? I'll pull you down closer here in just a second. <clears throat> Excuse me. I think the felt makes it a marker. Yeah. It, I don't think it's like that much difference either. It, if it is, it's slight. It's a very slight difference. Yeah, I'll just move this up to the camera. Of course, the, the outer ring is, is still a little wet. Um, but yeah, I think I've made these markers or these inks much more usable. And the color on these, we use the um, Zig Clean Cutter clean color watercolors they work great on this bristol yeah so that's very cool
don't have a baby wipe out here, so I'll just wipe that up with this. Get the rest of it when we do clean up later. But if it's lighter, you just need to do extra coats. That could be a good thing for shading. Yes, yeah, see, uh, there could be pros and cons each way. Um, all right. So that one is a usable marker now. So um, I'm going to keep the marker with the ink bottle. So later when I put the labels on, I'll know which marker was which color. Because I won't make you watch all that crap. Turn this around so hopefully you guys can see better. All right, I got the green ink in there. I'll go ahead and put the felt tube in. And while that's sucking up the ink, I'm going to go wash this one because now that we kind of know what we're doing, we can do this quicker, more production line. You know what I mean, jelly bean. Hey, Eileen, if you want, because I'm not going to use all these markers with the Jane Davenport ink, if you want, I'll send you some of the guts and stuff and you can try um, the product you were thinking about with and without the felt. So just say, if you want me to send you some of the leftover guts and stuff that I've got. What's well, a good question, but if it's lighter, okay, I did. can you refill them or do you have to get more markers? I think I could refill these. All I got to do is yank the butt off it. All I got to do is yank this off. Um, and it may be not that easy. Of course, you got to remember they make it hard so kids can't do it. But I'm smarter than a three-year-old. And I'm definitely smarter than a fifth grader. Or I could have Robert do it for me. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure you can get that butt out of there and just add more ink. I'm almost sure of it. But for 13 bucks, who cares? Really? No, thank you. I don't. Oh, but Eileen, what you don't understand, I'll send you the whole thing and then you've got a way to seal them and everything. All right, that's cleaned and dried. Now I got to figure out how to lock that back in there without wrecking the green. All right, so we've got, ah, oh, come on, man. Here we go. Well, it doesn't matter. Um, all right, we're going to do the purple that Jane Davenport did so I can see if it, I think she did the Berrylicious one, the one I watched. And this one, I mean, they're scented. And I was just going to say this has a scent, but I'm not sure I would call it berrylicious, if you know what I mean. Ah, oh, come on, Eileen. When Jean does hers with the cheap watercolors, you will buy one. Okay. The catnip is less messy as long as you don't do <laughs> All right. It does take a little bit for the um, colors to suck up into it. What did I do with that green? All right. Here we go. And the reason Jane Davenport is um, promoting this is because you use quite a bit of her ink. I mean, I still have plenty left for everything I'm going to do. But, yeah, no wonder she would want you to do this. <laughs> All right, so you can take this. It's still a little ink in there. That's all right. <laughs> Am I still doing everything wrong? <laughs> Probably. 
the cap does kind of push that down in. This one has liquid running in it, so I probably should have. I'll use a funky nib on this one. We, we'll do the three nib on this one. All right, here we go. Put it down into the handy dandy magic marker maker. Snap that bad boy on there. Get yourself a lid. Put it in the holder so that the ink starts draining down. We're good to go. Two down. Two, four, six, eight. Eight to go. Yeah, baby. Is yours coming today? I guess she could not come out with it on her own without copyright issues like Timmy had. Well, and I mean, I think the only reason Crayola can do something like this, because keep in mind, they manufactured this, marketed it, um, boxed it, everything for 13 bucks. This thing cost me 13 bucks. Okay. And I'm going to end up with however many markers. So, um, they obviously are depending on huge volumes. I promise you, probably every kid for Christmas is going to get one of these. <laughs> um, you're counting on sheer volume. And then after you have one, you don't have to rebuy it a hundred times, right? All right, let's see if the, I can get the ink from this out because we're going to. I'll test how light it came and then go wash this and we'll do another one re real quick. Do not let your kids do this alone. I would. But for kids mixing colors and stuff, I think this would be a great, you know, like activity. I would definitely do this with my kids. This is definitely something I would do with kids. Because they're learning about color theory and how sealed are the nibs. Good. It, it appears as though they're real snug in there. Um, and then I think when you do the magic wand thing, this part of it um it just pushes it all down together real snug you had the crayon maker i was a deprived child zoe i didn't have that i did have light bright though all right oops there's still green in there i don't want to mix colors i really don't of course that little bit maybe wouldn't even matter but All right, next up is, I'll just grab one at this because it doesn't matter. We're going to do fairy floss next, which I think is the lighter of the pinks. And I'm filling it just slightly higher than that 15. But my guess is... Um, Crayola has that measurement down pretty darn good that you're not gaining anything by adding more like I've been doing. Because <laughs> on the green one, I ended up with a little bit of ink down at the base, which I don't care about. All right, the green one is ready to test. So I can't believe I live in a house full of paper and when I really want just a piece of scrap paper, I don't have any. Something wrong with me. All right, we'll just get one of these. <clears throat> All right, Eileen, here's your pacifier. Oh, that's cool. Hmm. 
Yeah, baby. I'm going to have to pull you guys down. Can you see the triple nib? That's cool. Very cool. All right, now we'll, I'll just use the water brush. I'll just dry the water brush real good. And here's the green full strength. It's a little bit lighter, but actually that's nice to have a light version. And if I wanted to do a shadow, come on in. So yeah, I, so far, I'm going to say there is no downside going on here. It's pretty much performing exactly like I expected. You can always let it dry and do a second layer. It's, yep. See, I, so far, I'm, I'm going to say flat out, there is no downside here. All right. What did I do with my rag? There it is. And maybe I ought to be doing the labels right now at the same time, but oh well. I'm not. All right, so the next one I did was this one. And it was the Berrylicious. And it looks like it has pretty much sucked up. Well, no, not yet. It's still sucking up its liquid. Yeah, there's still a little bit of liquid that they're... It's sucking up. Can you guys hear the work that's going on upstairs? Would the inks work with water brushes? Yes, Galena, I believe they would. Yeah. Um, I would probably dedicate a water brush, but maybe you wouldn't even have to do that because I think they are all water soluble, so it would be no big deal. Um, but yes, I, I think you could put the inks in the water brushes. Would you have to add water? Well, I think that's entirely up to you, Galena. It would be whether what shade you would want, if you want it full strength or if you'd want it watered down in light. This is just lighter by its nature. I don't know why. Um, I got you. It's really pulled down close. Sorry. Um, yeah, I'm not sure what it is about this. It's probably because you're actually getting less ink is the deal. So if you wanted it lighter, out of the water brush, um, I think you could add water and then you could make it go further. Yeah, it's lighter because of the pigment load is less. Yeah, that's what I think too. So, yeah. Now on this one, um, it's taken a long time for that to suck up that ink. And I'm not gonna add any more. Um, if it wasn't so messy, I could turn that upside down and, and get the, um, the rest of the ink, but I don't, yeah, I don't need that mess going on in my life. Uh, never mind. I know what I'll do. I'll put it down in there like that. And just pour the rest of the ink on it. How about that, sports fans? I'm just knocking some of it out here so I can do my marker um, comparison. All right, this one's going to get a real bold tip, like a, a real bold calligraphy tip. And if I get through this without having, like, ink all over my hands, I'm just going to be so damn happy. Happy, happy, happy. All right, so you can push that down on, put it in the little machine here. Just like magic. Yeah, that kind of forces the, the nib up 
so that it kisses the um, the ink tube. So now we'll put a lid on this bad boy. Yep, wrong lid. And let that sit like that. And then I'll just go wash both of them at the same time. This one, I don't have as much ink left over. So that, that measurement of 15, Jean, when you do that, that measurement of 15 seems to be pretty darn accurate. It would appear. Which nib do we want? This one is the Fairy Floss. It's pink. How much will we use that? Yeah, we'll put this one in it. And the only thing I may not be happy about is that I chose the one that um, has all the wacky nibs. You know, I don't know if I would have been happier with all the same nibs or not. So, um, yeah, so I guess you do need this great big monster machine. <laughs> To actually kiss them and lock them together. Thanks, Dee. Go have a great afternoon. All right. I will let those soak down into the nibs while I go wash these. Well, all right. The first one I did was purple. Let me see if I can knock out some of this pink. Remember the top? ink is the purple the bottom is the fairy floss so that we can compare when i get back I think this is fun. I'm loving this. Loving it a lot. I'm doing good considering whatever video I watched. Oh my gosh. I think Dee Dee's been hanging out with um, Eileen too much. Pretty sure. So is this what you thought? Eileen, is this kind of what you expected? And I'm drawing the um, the tubes so that the inks are not getting watered down. Seems that way. Yeah, it does seem that way, doesn't it? Great entertainment for a Wednesday afternoon. Yes, indeedy. I probably should be cleaning because I lost all of yesterday. But I kind of caught up this morning. I didn't watch Dee Dee full time. I I was running around getting some stuff done and the rats doing the lawn today. And so I may not have time to make ribs, but oh well, we'll figure out something. All right, we got a couple more. Let's see if the inks are down in the nibs yet. All right, this is the first one. And this was the Berry Licious. Oh. This is like a, a very bold calligraphy nib. Oops. And the, the caps do lock on very positive. Um, so that's a, a good thing. How's the reno coming? It's good. Um, he's here cleaning up. They're not going to work all day today. So he's up there just cleaning up. So that if me or the cat or anybody goes in there, we're not walking all over their crap. But yeah, it's going good.
yeah, it's kind of nice because you actually get a lighter version. And you, I could tell when the ink was starting to get watered down. Um, all right, can you guys see that? The first line is the marker, the bold tip marker, and then this, the um, line to the right is the full strength ink. So that's kind of nice. Let's face it, Crayola does make good clients. You know what? They do, and that's why they've probably been around so darn long, and parents trust them, and I can't say a bad thing about Crayola products. They don't um, market them for anything other than what they are. They're kids' products. They're safe. They're non-toxic. You know, you can, I really don't think you can beat them. And their, um, their colored pencil, honestly... In my humble opinion, they're the hard lead, but they're as good as the Vera Thins if you're going to sketch with them. Yeah, it comes with the mix chart so the kids can learn about colors. And I, there's just not a downside here that I can see. All right, so this one has to go with this marker. All right, this one's still soaking down, but it is soaking. So we're just going to leave it and we'll go on with some other colors. Let's do the blue. This is the hydrangea. And now, I oh, there's my other nib. It was down in one of the things. So they didn't rip me off. I didn't care if they did, really. I wasn't going to throw a fit about it or nothing because I don't think I'm going to use all of them unless I have, find some other product. But the odors, um, like when you have them just sitting out in the room, you don't notice it after a little while. But as soon as I opened up this hydrangea, it's like, holy crap. I'm not sure that it smells like real hydrangea. It smells fake. So, all right. We'll let that one start sucking it up. Leave that ink there. Um, let's see. We've got the Frida Red, the Blueberry... The violet syrup, fresh air. We'll do the other green, the mermaid tail green. Because that way I won't, if I do too many blues, I could get them confused. But this is going to work out just great. You out of here? Have a great afternoon. And thanks for this stuff this morning, Dave. Okay, bye. All right, they're sucking up. Smells like chemicals trying to smell like hydrangeas. Exactly, Jane. They are stinky. But if you're out in the room like right now with all the odors, I can't smell it anymore. Gene, with those bottles of watercolor we bought, we could make 300 markers and still have lots left over. You need to make yourself some markers, girl. All right, that one looks like it's pretty well absorbed, so we'll get it so. Marker tube out. If there's any excess left. There's really not on that one. Let's see if I can knock some out to do the color comparison. Not really. That one absorbed pretty good. So I'll just use like a, this is more like the um, super tip nibs. Oops, got to put the little cap on it. And there we go, another marker. All right, we'll let that one just start absorbing down. Let's see if this one, this one's almost down to the writing surface now. And I think if I wanted to change that nib out, and I'm going to look into this, I could just grab a pair of um, those alligator clip things, grab on that, yank it out, and put a different one in. I really, I believe I could do that. So any orders is from all the inks. Well, of course, I don't go around here stinking. 
<laughs> and that's a lot, probably a lie. You think you'll stick with your clean colors? Well, I think you should, but there's nothing wrong with trying something fun and new. All right, here's the green. Come in there. I had it stuck on a lip or something. Like I'm worried about that drop of ink. I, I didn't save any of the blue, so. All right, what nib in this one? Oh, I haven't done the big fat round one. Maybe I did. I don't know. Who cares? That's what we're going to do. All right, put it in the handy dandy marker maker magic sealer. There you go. Can you just buy the nibs? See, that's what I don't know, Eileen. I'm going to have to check into that. I, Yeah, I'm going to have to check into it. I don't know. All right, I think this one's almost ready to test. Come on, man. Why are you so slow? Okay, the blue one is almost ready. All right, while those are moving down, I'll go ahead and go wipe these real quick, and then by then they should be ready to test. <clears throat> Oops, I'm back here. <clears throat> okay, bye, Sharon. Have a fun afternoon. I am having a great afternoon. And one thing I'm really interested in seeing is how these work in the beast. Um, oh, there it is. Let's see, I lost one of them. Yeah, that's probably a good idea, Jean, is have a bucket of water there so that you can clean them out because I don't want to contaminate the colors. So I'm just using a paper towel to um, wipe them after I rinse them and they're coming clean. So, all right, they should be ready to test now. Let's test the pink first. Yeah, because that's that ink. All right, this is a really funky nib. Let's see what it's about. Whoever designed this. This one feels a little dry, but I think I'll keep it. Um, yeah, I may want to buy different nibs. This nib I'm not crazy about. Um, but that's okay. Live and learn. I'm good. And when I'm using this water brush, I am um, drying the nib out. So it's not just slobber and water. Oh, this one's quite a bit lighter, quite a bit. I like the fact that it's lighter. I like it a lot. Look at that, making all plaid and everything. But you can tell as the water's flowing down into the marker, 
um, it's lightning too. So yeah, it's cool though. I love it. I am loving it. Sweet. All right, and then we'll do the, what? Oh, that's for the water brush. I'm losing it, losing it. I don't have enough room here, actually. I should be smart riding on these. I know I should be. All right, here's the big fat wide tip. Ooh, I like that color. Yeah, see, it's turned these markers or these bottles of ink far more usable for me. So that's good. I wonder if it sits longer. It will soak in the nib more and gets darker. That I don't know, Josie. I really don't know. I suspect not. I would bet that there's a certain rate of flow on that felt, and that's pretty much what you're going to end up with. This one is, um, it's lighter, but not near so much as some of the others. So it could depend on the color, actually. Can you guys see that? The left is the original. So sweet. I'm. This is working out great. You know, sometimes I get sucked into this crap and you never really know, you know, like, did I just waste 13 bucks? But I waste more than that eating out, so who cares? You don't see the nibs? You don't see them? Yeah. I may just contact Crayola. Just say, hey, I bought one of these. <laughs> Can I just get a boatload of nibs from you? And I did a YouTube video on it. All right, this is the hydrangea blue, and I don't actually have any of the undiluted ink, so let's give it a go. Yeah, this one really has a lot of smell. Oh, I picked up way too much ink there. Yep, the hydrangea is definitely a darker blue. Still pretty, though. No, this can work out great, great, great. Tell them the cat. <laughs> Your cat ate the nibs. They smell like composure treats. And she does love the composure treats. You guys saw her when I pulled that package out the other day. She loves those silly things. I love that blue. That is a pretty, pretty, pretty blue. Yep, love that blue. All right, that sample page is garbage. All right, let's... Try, we've only got five more left to do. I don't have 12 colors. Let's do the brown. It's hot cocoa. Let's see what it smells like. So does your vet's mom love them? Yeah. Mary was very agreeable. Mary, the, the ones we were given Mary were not chewable. They were capsules, if I remember right. Mary didn't respond well to... Um, other calm down meds she would like hallucinate and this was after she was fairly well into um the dementia so it, i i couldn't tell if it helped calm her or not honestly but it was worth a try all right there's brown going in we're gonna do the violet syrup next Her inks are pretty, you guys. I have to say that. 
um, whether or not you could get this same thing with other products? Um, probably. Um, so I appreciate Kui giving them to me for sure. All right, I'm going to have to move things here. <clears throat> Well, maybe I could just put them in here and they'll stay in order. Maybe that's what I could do. Coming up with a system to not get them all goofed up here. That's going to be a good system, I think. So we can get them labeled right. All right. That one can start sucking up. Right now, right now. You said they were going to, you said you were going to keep bottles with marker. I did. I did keep, but I was running out of space here on the table because I shoved Sharon's stuff down there and my table all of a sudden is like not usable again. So yeah, the bottle is still right with the marker. So hopefully no goof ups going on here. You have to have two, if you were doing this with kids, have two activities because waiting for this stuff to absorb. Um, yeah. Kids get bored as hell doing this. How to make your own alcohol markers using Crayola refill kit. Well, yay you, Picola. I'm I'm interested in seeing that. What are they using for pigment? Um, just curious. I mean, the alcohol part I get, um, but yeah, I'm just not sure what they would use for the pigment because I don't think you would use anything that had been water based. You know, I don't know. I'm gonna have to watch it now. You've got me um, intrigued. Some of them absorb faster, and I don't know why that would be. I'm just trying to think. It's got to be something about the, the pigments or something, because I put the same amount of ink in both these, and the brown is almost like it's taken forever. So maybe they're heavier pigments or something. So there is a refill kit for this thing you have. <laughs> oh, God, don't tell me that, Bacola. <laughs> Pain meds, terrible nightmares, and you can't remember what you saw. Teresa, I love my birthday month. That is like permission for me just to break the bank. Yeah, it's my birthday. <laughs> Oh, that's cute, Jean. That's what I think too, Jean, that it's the density of the pigments that because the brown has taken a long, long time and this um, purple color just sucked it right up. So, yeah, I'm sure it's something like that for sure. All right, I will just, let's see how many I've got left. I've got three. I'm going to use a fine tip on this. There we go. Now just let that start absorbing down.
and there's almost there's like zero ink left in that i'll try and get some to run out it's not gonna so i, I don't even think i have to go over and um clean this one if i can find my paper towel that i was using how do i lose stuff when i don't even move from my seat i mean i'm sitting here and it's gone what the hell all right gotta go get another one i'm not gonna spend any time looking for it Oh, there it was. I was sitting on it. <laughs> Duh. Try one with just a little water and no felt and see if it leaks. Okay, we can do that. We'll use our least favorite nib on that. Actually, my least favorite nib is that one that I already used. So there's the nib we'll use. We'll do that next, Darlene. And I actually have water and a pipette and everything right here. So, well, I'll do it in one of these so we don't, I don't overfill it. So it's a, as accurate a test as we can finagle. All right, here we go. Here's pipette. Here's clean water we'll fill it 15 i don't know if this is millimeters centimeters i don't know what the hell it is right up to the 15 mark like we did the ink so we know we're not overfilling okay this is pretty darn scientific yeah i can always dump out the water because i'm not going to put the felt in it so um and the nib I could care less about, honestly. I I think it's going to work, Eileen. Well, who knows? We'll see. All right, here we go. 15 whatevers of the water. It's leaking like crazy, Eileen. Yeah, it's just running right out of there. Oh, it's getting my other nibs wet. Yikes. Dumbass. Leave it to Eileen. Hey, you haven't made a mess today. Let me help. <laughs> yeah, I'll put those. This one's not wet. I don't think it'll hurt the nibs getting wet. It might just make the inks a little bit. They'll dry out. Um, I'll put those in there, the ones that got wet. That one didn't get wet. This one got a little wet. Okay. No harm done. No harm. No harm. Why did you listen to her? I have to listen to Eileen. That's the rules. That is definitely in the rule book. Hashtag it's all Eileen's fault. That's why there is such a hashtag. But I have to listen to her. I have to. So um, there you go, Eileen. You must use the felt insert. But you can get felt inserts out of any um, marker. And if you want to make spray inks, you can take those felt um, parts out, soak them in water, and you can make your own markers. Um, all right, this whole one I'm going to set in there. We're not going to use it. Yeah, it was only water. We didn't hurt nothing. How? It was a good experiment. Now we've answered that for all the hundreds of millions of people that were um, out there wondering that. She was dying for me to make a mess. She was. Hi, Stacy. You step away and Eileen ruins everything. Eh, it's all good. She didn't hurt a darn thing. But don't let her know that. She loves to think she did. We're going to do this real light periwinkle blue next. This is actually one of my very favorite colors. And it smell it's blueberry. 
It doesn't smell like blueberry either. Chemicals pretending to be blueberries. Blueberries were very expensive yesterday. I'm <laughs> just saying. <laughs> Strawberries were cheap though. Now I want you to try some Doc Martens and see how it works. Um, I don't have the, well, yeah, I do have the PH Martin watercolors. We'll do, yeah, we can try one of those. This is a Crayola brand marker maker. That's a hard thing to say, actually. Marker maker. Um, and you get all the parts. It's got the felt insert. You get the tube. You get the lid. And you get the nibs. And they actually give you the blue, yellow, and red um, ink that you can make your own markers in whatever color you want. And it's obviously designed for kids, right? But they give you a color mixing guide. So if you want this color of orange, you add nine drops of yellow and six drops of red. So they're learning math and color theory. So hello, how can you not love that? Um, but I'm putting the Jane Davenport inks in it. So I'm turning these bottle of Jane Davenport inks into markers. And that brown still has not absorbed. What the hell? We're going to go ahead and finish that one. I'll just pour it in the top. And it feels like there's a lot of ink left. I Maybe there's not, but I'm going to pour it in. We're going to see how much. Yeah, there's quite a bit of this brown ink left. So I don't know what the hell that's about. All right, now I poured too much. I'm going to have to set that in. Yeah, the brown really, I don't know what the heck. So I'll just pour it back into the bottle. No big deal. I'll put a little bit right there. This is chocolate, and it smells like dirt. There was quite a bit left in there. That is really weird. Really, really, really weird that the brown did not absorb up into the felt as readily. Every other color has worked perfectly, absolutely perfectly. All right. That one's completely dry, too. So, All right. Let's do brown. We'll do the four nib in the brown. Oops, it leaked a little bit, so I gotta be careful because I'm gonna end up with brown everywhere if I do not. All right. All right. There we go. Magic and the, the little contraption out here in front of me, Stacy. Um, presses it all together. And then you've got to let the ink run from the felt tube down into the nib. So I'll set that one aside and let it fill up. And I'll go rinse this one real quick. Was that the brown? I got to find out. I think it was. Yeah, it was. I didn't have any other colors out. All right, I'm going to go rinse this one real quick. You love this? <laughs> oh my god, Eileen. You kill me. <clears throat> I have I don't know about her brown. It looks nice and dark. I think it would make good chocolate. Which that brown out of those watercolors didn't. That pigment is intense, I have to say that. She made the whole sink brown. I have to say for 13 bucks, I'm tickled with it. It is working exactly like I expected it to based on the um, video that I watched from Jane Davenport. 
I mean, it's working exactly like I expected it to. That blue is already sucked up. And if I feel like the, um, oh, this one is, you dope. Um, I picked up that tube that I said I wasn't going to use that had the wet nib in it. Thank you, Eileen. Um, all right, this one I'm going to put a tip that I really like because I think I'll use this one a lot. All right. All right, the red one's ready. The well, it's really purple, I guess. It's ready to test. Did you get her done? See what? Did you get her done? Got her done. Got a flat tire. Oh no. Do you have to go into Curtis Tate? Pardon? You gonna go into Curtis Tate? I guess I'm gonna have to. Bummer, dude. Now, this one feels a lot juicier. Of course, I let it sit there longer while I was thinking around. So, um, let me see if I can get maybe back. Um, And I didn't have excess of this one. So, I'm testing the marker color against the, um, the original when I'm doing this, so, and I'm wiping this water brush completely dry. Oops. This one doesn't seem to be much darker, at least to me, maybe a little bit. We'll see when it dries. But yeah, I don't notice that one is a whole lot darker, actually. Hmm, interesting. But the purple one that Jane did, it was obviously, and by kids, I mean young kids and old kids. Yeah, I think so too, Jean. Yeah, we're going to try some um, Dr. Martin's here in a minute because I do have some um, liquid watercolors. So we're going to give that a go next. All right, and the blue is still soaking down. We're waiting for the brown to soak down. This one is done. Just hit the camera, sorry. And that's brown. There's not enough blue ink, I don't think, left to... Nope, there's not. All right, next color up is the Frida Red. What does it smell like? Ick. And I would say don't overfill, Jean. When, stop at the 15 for sure. Um, or you're just going to be dealing with excess. So they obviously have the um, formula for how much ink that that felt can absorb. It does look a lot darker. When I look on the camera, it does. It's a little bit darker, but not anything I'd write home about. Keep in mind right there in the center, I think I overlap. But yeah, on the screen, it does look a lot darker. I agree. So they're like distress ink refills. I don't know what you're talking about, Eileen. These, I think, she calls them ink, but they've got to be water soluble. And I threw the packaging away. Um, you probably could find out online. Um, I think this one, it must, supposed to smell like cherries. Um, but I don't know if I had to, I'm guessing that they have got to be water-based. That they're dye inks. 
Yeah, I think they're going to be water-based dye inks for sure, for sure. See this red one pretty much sucked up pronto. All right, I've got to go wash that other one so I can get another one going. We've only got one more, so we're almost done with this little project. And then we're going to try the Hydrus, P.H. Martin Hydrus. And I don't know what they are. But, do, you know, keep in mind, don't put any acrylic inks or anything like that in there in these tubes. Reason being, acrylics are going to dry and harden. Um, Water-based products are not going to harden when they dry. So, um, yeah, don't put any acrylic inks in here. Those FW inks we all got at Hobby Lobby, this is not a good application for those. Hi, Star. Um, but anything that's water-based, you're safe, I think, putting in here. Um, I think you could put the Timmy refills in here. We could try that if you want. We could do like a vintage, I could have a vintage photo pen because I have the vintage photo refill. I think you could do that because um, I'm going to have excess. So, um, yeah, we could try the Timmy refill if you want. It's only money. <laughs> and this one is um fresh air um this is not what fresh air smells like just saying just saying all right so that one can be absorbing this one is fully absorbed so we are making a pen making a pen making a pen Um, I think I'll do, this one was the red. Let's do the red with a calligraphy nib. All right, put it in the magic marker maker. And there we go. Another marker down. see if the blue one it's still waiting for it to run down the brown should be ready now it is look what the hell where did that come from i've got brown ink down at the bottom here how did the hell did that happen because it's not on the outside of the tube what the heck how did that happen and it's down in where it was sitting that is bizarre and crazy this brown is behaving so different than any of the others. It's crazy. It's feeling kind of dry. I don't know. The brown is definitely different than the others, and I can't tell you why. I, I just don't know. But the little um, pen holes where you can rest the pens... It's all full of brown ink. How in the hell did that happen? That's crazy. I'll just sop it up with the paper towel. Weird, weird, weird. Because you poured it in the end. Not on the brown I didn't, did I? I don't think I did. Because it was, remember there was so much excess ink, even though I used the exact same amount. I did, I did not pour it in. The, and look at how much lighter the brown is wow that's crazy the brown is not like in being made into a marker the brown is definitely a different color yeah i didn't pour it in the end because there was too many um yeah there was too much ink left i poured it back in this bottle but yeah that's really look at the difference in the colors there the browns are way 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 different Hi, Sophia. Safia, Sophia. Um, 18. Was it 18 or 16, you guys? Go get the tire fixed. Okay, hon. Bye.
Okay. Mm. Um, it's going pretty good, Sophia. It's it's been pretty awesome, really. It's doing exactly what I thought it would do, exactly what I intended for it to do. So as of right now, zero complaints. And I've filled all the markers. So I can wash this one and we'll try one of, we'll um, do one of the hydras colors and we'll do some Tim Holtz distressing. This has been fun for me. Probably boring as hell for you guys. Sorry, but Elaine, Elaine, Eileen wanted to see it. So there you go. I'll be coloring my mushrooms with Jane Davenport ink. Yeah, baby. All right. Let me pick one of the hydras colors. I actually would like to have yellow because um, I don't have a yellow. I have yellow. Let's see. I have green, blue, pink, red, purple, brown. I think I might do the hydras in yellow. Yep, I think so. I think, I think, I think. I really hate to use that much of the hydrous inks, but I guess I could order more. Because I've used quite a bit of these. I'm going to actually use the little bit darker yellow orange one. Um, and this is highly, highly pigmented. So I think what I'm going to do, um, you get 16 star. Um wondering if because this is highly pigmented, okay, it's very, very concentrated. Jean, I need some free advice. Would you use half pigmented and then fill it up with water? Because I know that you don't use this stuff straight, I don't think. Um, that you would thin it with water. So what do you think, Jean? Um, would you dilute this at all? I'm kind of, yeah, I'm thinking add water too. Maybe two thirds, one third, um, two thirds pigment, one third water. Half and half. What do you think? Two thirds ink, one thirds water. Okay, that's kind of the um, the ratio I was coming up with too, Jean. All right. And these are kind of expensive. So this is truly an experiment. Don't, don't do this at home if it doesn't work. <laughs> because, yeah, you'll just waste your expensive product. But I'll do it in the name of science. All right. And I... As dangerous as this is, I'm going to try and mix it a little bit. Because the pigmented solution is definitely going to be heavier than the water. Um, so ideally, what I'd like to do is, is shake it and shake it up real good. Just do it. Just cover it with my thumb. What the hell? So I can spread that pigment out. Do less liquid or more liquid, actually. Okay. There we go. 
I'm gonna have a yellow thumb. <clears throat> Skewer to mix. Yeah, I'd shaken it up like that, which is my thumb. It worked. It was fine. Now we'll let the little pad absorb it. The blue is ready to go, so that's the wrong tube. That's the watered one that we gooped up. All right, I'm going to do the yellow with the big fat nib, so we'll do this one with this. It's just a two-point nib. What the hell? Here, okay, that's good. Can't believe I'm doing this and not being a total complete wreck mess here. Sweet. All right, we'll let that one run down now. And the blue one, it appears, is ready. Yep, all the ink has flowed down to the nib. Th now, this one is that real, real light blue. What did she call it? Blueberry. I love this color blue of Jane Davenport. It's that light, light blue. They do feel a little dry. I will say that. Um, but they may not feel that way after an hour or so, too. So it's hard to say. I think the design is great for kids with the spaces for the tubes to sit so they don't spill. Someone did. Yeah. Yeah. No. Whoever engineered this, I think, did a fabulous job, really. They're in the um, space station over here where you lock it together, there's room for all your materials. Um, yeah. Whoever engineered this really had their head screwed on good. For sure. I think it's a great thing for kids. And I would definitely do it with a kid. Yeah. This is awesome. I'm I'm pleased. That's all I gotta say is I'm really pleased. It worked every bit as good as I had hoped. <clears throat> now that blue, can you see that blue? How much difference the color is? But in effect, what I've done is turn that color into two now that are readily available to use for kids and Janet. No shit, Kimberly. <laughs> well, I am basically a 12-year-old. And oddly enough, I'm a 12-year-old in a 12-year-old body too. <laughs> I never, ever really grew up in any way, shape, or form. All right, let's see what the, we already did the brown. All right, the brown has, did not leak anymore. So I don't know. That was weird how it got in there. All right, now that the brown's been sitting longer, it um, it's still lighter, but it's working better. So I'm cool with that. All right, that one's ready to go over there. The blue is ready. I tested it. Let's do the Frida Red. Now, this is a big old fat calligraphy nib. Like that. It's almost an orangish red. Um, oh, that stinks. Oh, my God, does that stink? Um... I will be interested to see, oh, way to go. Um, if the markers continue to stink, the red is definitely a whole lot lighter. Look at the difference in those two. Major, major, major difference. Like it. Like it a lot. Looks darker in the first use. The brown one. 
Huh, that's weird because I don't know. Looking here, it's not. This is the first time I used it. This is the second. And it is darker the second time. This is full strength up here. So I'm not sure that they're going to change a whole lot um, as they sit. I mean, I could do a test later and see. But that red, very obviously, very obviously different. All right, let's see how the yellow's coming. It's sucked up all its little inks there. I'm interested to see, because, Jean, I think this is pretty much what you can expect out of yours. Um, we'll do the yellow. No, let's see. Oh, I don't know what to do. We'll do the yellow with the triple nib. nib. Because I'm really hoping the vintage photo will work. You think the nib was wet on the brown one? Hmm. I don't know. That could be. I, but I don't think so. I think I got all the wet nibs. I put them aside in a different container. All right. This one, I'm going to go ahead and let it absorb down. And we have this one is still ready to test. This was the fresh air one. You know what? These definitely are going to help me because I just smelled this one. I don't like the fresh air scent. The markers don't have an odor. Oh, this is a very different color. This is like a blue green. Um, more turquoisey, I would say. <clears throat> And I know it's going to be a lot, lot, lot lighter. You could be right, Teresa. Um, but it's not still leaking, so I'm cool with it. It's all good with me. All right. Here's the full strength in that color. Oh, that's not that different. Yeah, not that different at all. A little bit, but yeah, sweet. All right, let me go wash that last one out because now we've filled and tested all of the Jane Davenport. We've got the yellow watercolor and we're going to do some the Timmy. They may get darker when they have settled a while. That's what I'm wondering too, Teresa. I'll have to, I'll, I will, I threw away that first test sheet, but I may save both of these just so I have something to compare against when I test them later. I'm interested to see how they're going to behave in the bees because chances are very good that is where I will use them the most because I don't really do do color books, right? Now that yellow hydrus looks like it stained the um, little um, plastic thing. I don't know. I'll dry it out right now and see. But yeah, it looks like it stained it. All right, here we go. We've got the Distress Ink Vintage Photo Refill Bottle. We wonder. That could work. Well, I'm going to tell you here in just a second. I. It, they're water-based, so I have to believe that they would stay wet. You know, they're airtight, but the acrylic is not going to, um, it's not going to, I would never put, yeah, it stained this a little bit, that hydras did. Not horribly, I mean, it. but yeah, it definitely, of course, I didn't wash it with soap either. 
Hmm. That's a strange little thing there. We're gonna. I'm gonna do the distress ink in that, so I don't stain two of them. Yeah, well, if you could do the, the archival black, you would certainly know the properties of that marker pretty good. You know it would be permanent for sure. Um, and I don't, you know, I'm thinking these are going to work, but if they don't, I don't mind wasting them. If I had more product and wanted to, I'd just order a second kit. I wouldn't care. All right, I'm using the vintage photo full strength. I'm not sure if that's smart or not. What do you think? Well, before I get too carried away, Jean, what do you think? I I think full strength would work. We're going for it. Right now, I'm about half, a little over half. We're going full strength, boys and girls. It might be really dark, but... We're going for it. What the hell? Full strength. All right. Yeah, I'm doing full strength. And Eileen's going, why'd you ask if you're not going to wait for an answer? Because I'm impatient. Oh, this is brown. I want, hope it's not like that other brown. Ugh. And I'm on my last not wet nib. They come with tubes, nibs, and the, oh, you're telling somebody else. We painted with them at one of his classes. Oh, and he used them full strength. Okay. Yeah, I know you could use them like that. But, yeah, to have them in a pen, that might be really good. I'm eager to see how this yellow works because I would maybe do. <clears throat> now, I was going to say I, will, I would do more of the hydrous colors. I would not do the hydrous white. Um, You'd think that it would be a great thing, but I don't think the white, the properties of the white watercolor is going to be very different than the colors themselves. So I would not do the white just based on what I know about white. Yeah, this is acting more like that other brown. There must be something in brown pigment. Don't you think? That's what I'm thinking. All right, the yellow is ready to go. So we're going to let that brown just keep soaking up. I'll get a different paper, paper out so I can write on here that this is the P.H. Martin. Oh, this is nice. That is way nice. And it looks different and it feels different. Huh. That is very nice. Wow. I do like that a lot. Now, let's try, um, I'm glad I went with the darker yellow, too. I don't think the lighter one would have been as nice. Yeah, no, this turns your P.H. Martins into sweet markers. Yeah, baby, baby, baby. It's slightly lighter, um, but I would probably not use the P.H. Martins directly out of the bottle anyway. Bluefinger wants to know what is the best black waterproof ink. I like the carbon, the platinum carbon black ink. Um, you can buy it in a bottle. Um, I, I, there was a time 
I would have said buy Noodlers. You can't beat Noodlers Inc. Um, but honestly, since I've tried this um, Platinum Carbon Ink, I would recommend this. It's as good as Noodlers, but I kind of like it better. Yeah, for fountain pen, get the Platinum Carbon. Best ink, I think. But Noodlers is good too. So whichever... Um, Whichever you want. And you can use it either um, in a fountain pen or a dip pen. Yeah, for a fountain pen, get that platinum carbon. And you can buy it in the cartridges too. Um, I think that's the thing. Same. Yeah, it's, it's, it, I don't know how long it's been around. I found out about it in the last year. Um, and when I tried it, I was absolutely sold. I was sold on that carbon ink. For real. All right, Eileen, PH Martins, probably of all the products we put in there, in my humble opinion, Worked fabulous, and we um, diluted them two thirds to one. Two thirds ink, one third water. And I would just shake it up like I did, just get it mixed real well. Um, but I would say, yeah, that was definitely a success. This was not a fail. All right. The nibs, you know, I'm not crazy about the nibs, but yeah, this is. There is absolutely nothing wrong with this. And the nice thing is, um, if it starts going dry, I can refill it. I know what it is. So, I mean, I could keep that marker wet forever. I mean, the only thing that could happen now is I'll wear the nib down or something. Tomorrow you'll compare the Dr. Martins and the Sergeant Art. That'd be good. All right, this is still taking a while for this um, vintage photo to suck up into the um, felt, but it is it is doing better than the um, Jane Davenport brown. So, and actually, at this point, I probably could put this into here. Um, I'll just use this nib because it's the only one that's left that's not wet. So I'm going to go ahead and put this in here and then pour the rest of the vintage photo that's left in here because there's not much in this end. Just let it. Yeah, there's not that much left. I might put just a drop of water in there. I mean, and I mean just a drop. Okay. All right. We're going to see if the vintage photo pen will work. If it will, Eileen will own one of these before the night is out. I promise you. She will be on Amazon or she'll run out to her Amazon warehouse and say, warehouse guy, I want this. And he'll run out and get it for her. Would a super nib, nib fit in those? We're going to find out, Picola. You can buy nib refills for this. You can, Allie. Oh, I, that's good news. I like hearing that. All right, got to put it in the handy dandy magic marker maker machine. Punch that bad boy down, and then we'll let the ink soak down to the nib. So I don't know. I'll tell you my feelings about this is for 13 bucks. this was a complete success. Complete. Because I have some of the Jane Davenport um, brush pens. They were also a gift. I am not a fan. They puke out too much product. And then after, if you're working on something and it pukes out too much of something, you can't undo that. You cannot. Um, so I, 
I'm thinking this is a complete and total success. And I may go ahead and fill um, the rest of them with some of these PH Martins, unless Eileen wants me to send them to her, and then I'll send them to her. Um, I'm going to take apart a super tip real quick, so you got it, so we'll see if they'll fit. I kind of suspect they may not, because the barrel is such a different size. We're gonna, I'm gonna get my little tweezers here, and we're gonna give it a go. I call these alligator clips now. In college, I call them roach clips. <laughs> Just saying. This is what I'm going to use to pull the, the nib out of a super tip. I should have, I think one of these green ones is almost completely dry. So let me, that's a juicy one. I think this one's pretty dry. Mm, it acts juicy. I have a whole tub of these super tips here. This one is almost dry. <clears throat> yeah, they're not going to fit. I can tell you already. That's what a nib looks like if you take it out of its pen. Let me see if I can get the felt. Yeah, these don't, this doesn't act like it's going to come out. So wait, maybe it is. Nope, it's not. Looks like an old-fashioned tooth puller. It's an alligator clip. I have them in lots of different sizes. It is a big one, isn't it? I have smaller ones, too. I have a bunch of different sizes. Of them. Yeah, maybe if you, you got the big toddler size markers. Yeah, that's what I was thinking, too. On Amazon, the refills are $12 for a set of 12 refills. Worst deal. Um, well, I got 16 for $13. So um, yeah, I, I would say, but these this was the wacky tip. So I don't know if you just bought all the regular nib. I don't know what would what the cost for that is. But yeah, in addition to that, let's go ahead, just if, in case you guys are even considering spending the money to get this, let's see um, what the ink in these um, bottles that Crayola scent are like, you know, because yeah, you got a lot of red, yellow, and blue that you can mix, and then it Here's the color chart, you know, so it says you can have up to 16 different. Well, this one gives you two, four, six times three. This actually gives you 18 color mixing possibilities. So I imagine they're going to be about the same strength pigment as what you would get in a Crayola marker would be my guess. And they've got that crap down to a science, I promise you. Melody wants you to color a rubber stamp with a distressing marker. Okay. Yeah, as soon as that starts um, going down into the nib, we will get that bad boy done. Nothing wrong with this blue. And it gets lighter as it starts mixing with more water. 
So if you wanted to keep it that full strength blue, just use a regular paintbrush. Don't use a water brush, right? You missed the distress marker. It's not ready to go yet. One color you dump on the brand new carpet, <laughs> you think? Yeah, as soon as that um, vintage photo is, is ready to, to write with, we'll, we'll give it a go. So yeah, there doesn't appear to be anything wrong with the colors that Crayola gives you as well. And you know that they're going to be the, the correct um, colors for mixing. Yeah, the yellow is very pretty. Very. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with that. Um, very close to the hydras, believe it or not. Yeah, very close. Where's Robert? Robert's not here. You guys are saying hi to Robert. Robert's nowhere to be found. He went to town. You guys are freaking me out. Yep, I, I will definitely vouch for Crayola making good products. They really do. So I won't throw this away. I mean... It's just like having um, watercolor, really. Now that I've got the three colors down there, I will. No, there is a Robert in chat, silly. Okay, it's not my Robert, by the way. He wouldn't know how to get into chat if his life depended on it. Hi, Robert. I have a Robert who lives here, too. Don't take anything I say about Robert personal. <laughs> All right, here, we're going to do a red, clean out the brush. Get some yellow. We're going to make some orange here. Very nice orange. Well, Crayola, you have got it going on. Not my Robert, yep. Yeah, I didn't say if he went downstairs to his computer. Oh, that was the red and the blue. That's not a pretty purple. Sorry. It's really not. But I'm not doing the formula that they recommended either. So we're going to add one more drop of red in there. Let's see if we get a prettier purple, because that purple is but ugly. Now it's got too much. So if you're going to use Crayola's colors, use their mixing chart. Can you change the tips if you want to? Yeah, I could pull them out. But see, by then, they've already been contaminated with the color. You know, if you had extra tips, yeah, I suppose you could take one out, put another one in, but then you've got a bunch of tips that are already colored. Yeah, it's not, the first one was closer to purple. This one up here. Now we're going to mix the blue and the green. And keep in mind, this is not, I didn't use the colors according to their chart, right? And honestly, they may or may not work. I don't know. Looks like brown to you. Yeah, it, it is a little bit on the brown side. I agree. There's a little bit of olive green. If I add more brown, it's just going to get browner, so, or bluer. Yeah, you can make some nice colors of green. Let's see when we get to full on turquoise color. So yeah, that'd be fun just to play color mixing.
Galena, I think she would enjoy it. I really do. I can't imagine. If I was 10 and got this, I would have been in heaven. I promise you. I would have been in complete heaven. I would have thought that was the best thing that ever happened. Now I'm making mud quite intentionally. I'm seeing there. Now I've finally gotten to brown. So, but out of those three colors, I mean, those colors aren't bad, right? Green, green, green. <laughs> I made a lot of green, green, green. Lots of shades of green. But yeah, for having just three bottles of cheap ink, it's fun. All right, let's see if the vintage photo has gotten down to the, it's not gotten down to the nib. It's slowly going down. There's something about the brown pigment, you guys. Um, it must be very heavy or something. Um, it's just taken a long time. And it's this is hard plastic, so it's not like I can squish it and force it down in there. I suppose I could cheat a little. I'm going to cheat. Cheater, cheater, cheater. I'll just aid it a little bit. Go from both ends, see if we can't rush this process a little bit. Yeah, I think any kid would enjoy it. I really do. I can't imagine a kid not enjoying this. I mean, boys after a certain age, maybe not, but um, yeah, as a kid, I would have dug this big time. So, and I guess too, if you get those bottles, these bottles of the ink, you could also turn it into sprays. You could put it in a spray bottle and make your own sprays. So in essence, if I use their color mixing guide and had a spray bottle, I could make virtually any color spray that I wanted now, right? Can you press the nib? Um, no, it's kind of hard. The nibs are, are very hard. When I've been pushing them in there, they don't give. Um, here's that one that I got wet. Let me see if I can get it out. I know I can get it out with this think if I didn't push it in too hard. Yeah, see, I just pulled this nib out. I may have crushed it a little, but it'll clean up. Yeah, it bounced pretty much right back. Um, so, yeah, you can get the nibs out. Um, and, I mean, I was putting the ass on this, and I did crush it a little bit. Not that I'm worried about it. It would still be usable. Um, so I guess what I would say about that is leave it out a little bit because I had this one pushed down pretty far. Yeah, you might need some help, you know, some needle nose or something, but you could get it to work. That one's garbage as far as I'm concerned now. Um, and then I've got a couple of extra nibs that got wet that I'm going to let dry out thoroughly before I um, attempt to use them. So I've got three more pens to make. Yep, and that's the parts that I've got left too. So I've got three nibs and three pens. So, And if I... Like them, I'll probably use the um, the hydrus watercolor in them. Yeah, the vintage photo is going to be a really pretty brown. It's just going to take a while. Um, and that almost indicates to me that maybe I should have um, 
diluted it a little bit, but it's a definitely a pretty brown. So yeah, I I'm cool with that, and it's not even fully absorbed yet. So, but I'm I keep wanting to press it like you do the water brush, but that's not going to work. So, um, what I do with the lid? Really, how can you lose something in two seconds flat? It's no wonder I drive me crazy. Okay, let it keep flowing down. Yeah, I'm, I'm tickled with this. I really am. Worked just like I expected. Do you have a Goulet pens? Yes. Oh, a Goulet pens ink sample I could try. Well, I have um, Goulet pens. I'm not sure what you're asking, Peace. Hi, by the way. Um, Goulet pens sells almost everything I think that Jet Pens does. So when you say a Goulet Pens ink sample, do you mean their name brand? If they have their own name brand, I do not have one of those. Now color a rubber stamp with the brown like Melody asked. I'm going to, Teresa. Janet, you will have to tweet Dee Dee so she knows they worked out after all. I know. I'll just call her on the phone and say, if you keep treating me like Eileen does, I'm going to start treating you as bad as I treat her. Um, let's see what we've got stamps right here. Let's see. And you have to keep in mind that marker is not real, real juicy. So what do we want? We've got a flower stamp here. We'll do a flower. If I can get it inked up. <clears throat> Getting another piece of paper. All right. Come on, vintage photo. Okay, and when you're working with something like this, you got to work pretty fast. Um, and then before you stamp it, because it's it's gonna the nature of the ink is gonna want to dry pretty quick. Breathe on it. To get it moist again and then stamp it. I would say that came out beautifully. Can you see that? Oh, just an ink sampler from them? Any ink? Yeah, I have lots of ink. I have every kind of ink, I think. So yeah, Melody, that worked out beautifully. Very nice. Now, I'm going to clean this off and stamp it on the ink pad and compare. But, yeah, I would say that stamped off beautifully. That was also a huge success. So now, honestly, all right, we're going to try something else right now. I'm just going to wash it off. Dry it. Let me find my rag to dry it so I don't get paper towel goobers on it. All right, we're going to test real quick because I do have the Distress ink pads. It's the Vintage Photo Distress ink. I'm kind of like Xander, though. I think I like those smaller pads. I think if I have to replace these, I'm going to replace them with those um, smaller pads that Xander had. Okay, it's slightly different color, you guys. It really is. Um, here's the vintage photo right off the ink pad. And I don't know why that's not. To me, it's not focusing. It's just pissing me off. You have a lot of glitter ink samples. Do not put glitter ink in your fountain pen piece. Do not do that. Don't do it. Get yourself a dip pen if you want to do that. Never put glitter pen, no, in your fountain pen. You'll ruin your pen. 
that would be way cheaper to buy refills and the kit to make distress markers. Melody, I think you're onto something there. I really do. Um, not to mention the space savings. It's a whole lot easier to keep the markers than it is a bunch of ink pads. So, and now I'm just, I'm going to try because the nature of the distress ink I'm thinking is different than um, the Jane Davenport ink, but I'm going to really quickly, we're going to try this last, did that blue one come out kind of pretty? Let me see. Where's my sample? Yeah, I wasn't crazy about that one. Uh, let's use the Frida one. It'll come out good, or hopefully. This marker is a lot juicier now, no doubt about it, than when I tried to write with it right away. So they will get juicier as they stand. And I've been keep, I was keeping that one on end. Cool. Yeah. See, now I could have ink pads in all my Jane Davenport colors as well. Oh, put the glitter ink in these Crayola markers. I'm not sure about that. I don't think the glitter would be absorbed into these dense foam nibs. So I don't think that's a good option. I really don't. Um, I mean, I suppose you could try it, but I'm thinking the glitter, depending on the denseness of the glitter, you know, or the size of the glitter particles, I don't think it would go down into the nib. I really don't. Jean can give me her opinion tomorrow after she plays with them, but I'm thinking, um, yeah, no, probably not. And see, this works better. I mean, you, I guess you could have well, made an ink pad. But this is so much easier. Thanks for asking, Melody. I would probably, it would have taken me a long time to think about doing this. <sighs> Look at that. Perfect. Perfect. Sweet. Love that. Yep, love that a lot. Yeah, I think they would clog. No, the glitter ink would not work. The glitter would not absorb, nor would it release. So that, that's what I think too, Jean. I think we agree on that. Yep. Yeah. The felt in the tube, it would not flow. That's what I think too. Yeah, I really, you guys, I'm looking for a downside. I don't want to enable you if it's not really going to work. Like I hoped it would work, but this is working out exactly like I hoped and better. So, yeah, so I, my guess is, you know, if it's Distress Ink, Watercolor, Jane Davenport, I'm trying to think what other liquid products I have around here. I would not put alcohol markers. I would not put alcohol in these, and I'm going to tell you why. I think Crayola has done a fabulous job of making everything airtight. Um, but if your alcohol markers are not absolutely airtight, you've just wasted. You, I would not put India ink in them either. No, I would not put India ink in them. No. The nature of India ink is to dry. And when it dries, it hardens and it is permanent. Um, so even water. That's why people had so much trouble with those technical pens that D has talked about before and I have them all over this place. I still love my technical pens, but you used India ink in those and they were impossible to keep clean. If they dried even a little bit, you were cleaning that whole damn pen. So no, I would not put any kind of India ink in here. I would not put acrylic ink in these. It's going to have to be a water-based product. I would not put the Lindy's sparkly 
in here? No, I would not. The flat lindies, if you um, dissolved it in water, yes, I think you would because, I mean, they're designed to be um, diluted in water and turn, you know, into a solution. So, yes, I think the flats would be fine. Anything with mica or glitter in it, no, I, I, I would not. I mean, you can try it just for the hell of it, but I think what you'd be doing is just wasting a pen. You like this stamp? These were fun stamps. My mom and I both had some, and I don't think I have the border stamp with it. But you could get these stamps, okay? Um, I have a bunch of the different flower ones. And then there were, let me see if I can find the border real quick. It's probably in the sentiments one. Um, they were sold, and I know um, Eileen had probably seen them. I know I have the border somewhere. I didn't buy a lot of the border stamps. Hmm. Don't know where it is. I'll come across it as soon as I'm not streaming. Yeah, I don't know where it is. But anyway, there was a border stamp that went around these. And I don't see it up here with the flower stamps. But you could get the border that said, happy birthday. Thank you. Congratulations. And it was four sides. And you'd have, you know, congratulations, congratulations. But then they were interchangeable. So they were really fun. My mother and I bought a bunch of them. Will the FW acrylic inks work in a water brush? No, Teresa, I would not do that. Or if I was going to do that, I would put a little bit of the acrylic ink in there and dilute it a little bit, use it quickly, and then absolutely dry that or clean that um, brush thoroughly. But it, when they start drying, the acrylics, they become solid. And you don't want anything in your water brush or your technical pen or even these kind of pens that become solid when dry. That's the whole thing is think about what they turn into when they're dry. If they're a solid, no, keep them out of anything like that. But if, if there was something I wanted to do, you can buy these cheap ass water brushes. I think I've got one right here. Yeah. You can buy these cheap water brushes from Wish for like a buck a piece. Um, and they're actually pretty darn good. I mean, so if you don't mind wasting a brush, order a bunch of these and just trash them out. But you would have to treat them much like a throwaway. You might be able to clean them. Um, but yeah, I'm not sure that I would. Uh, the FW inks, um, probably if you wanted to do them like a pen, Teresa, I don't know if you have a, um, a dip pen, but the FW acrylic inks, if you want to use them like a writing instrument, the best way to use them is with a dip pen. Oh, and somebody said they wanted to. I'm not sure why. What was the deal about the Goulet pen inks again? They're just fountain pen inks. I mean. They're just inks in a bottle. And they're formulated for fountain pens. So before you put anything in your fountain pen, double check its formulation. Yeah, anything acrylic has plastic. So they dry, when they dry, they are solid. Ah, oh, that's great, Dorothy. That is way cool. So the string art with the FW inks was fun, Teresa. I had a ton of fun using them that way. Yeah, you can use the FW inks in your airbrush, but you have to like clean it immediately. You cannot let it dry. Cannot. You hear wish being mentioned? Um, you know, you just have to go on the wish app. And look, Stacy, they have 
You can literally buy anything on the Wish app. That it comes directly from China. Um, <clears throat> so it takes like, I don't know, probably two to three weeks usually to get delivery. Um, but you can buy some inexpensive stuff there. But again, you get what you pay for. Um, but I found a few products like the, the Micron pens. The Micron pens that you order from Wish are exactly this pen. And they're so much cheaper. I like the double-sided tape that I've ordered off of the Wish app. Um, those water brushes aren't horrible. But, like, yeah. It just takes a while to get the product. So... But yeah, I I actually can honestly say I haven't bought anything from the Wish app that I haven't been pretty darn, oh, now it's running more freely, that I haven't been pretty darn pleased with, frankly, in all honesty. Yeah, I'm going to love this vintage photo pen, but it, it's draw, it definitely needs, that nib needs to go ahead and finish. Um absorbing the ink so you had a bad wish experience staying away from ordering for a while what happened Teresa I'd be interested um you're welcome Joycey what happened because I've really not had a bad experience I mean I think you have to be really careful if something looks too good to be true it's probably too good to be true so do some more checking You order from AliExpress, same concept. They have metal die stamps, stencils, anything you can think of. Yeah, a lot of people like AliExpress, too. I haven't jumped on that bandwagon, Melody. I'm trying to stay the hell away from it. Thank you, Josie. So, yeah, but every I've heard a lot of people talk really highly of AliExpress, too, and it's the same sort of deal. They're all Chinese products. I wish we had American companies who could do it, but yeah. But you got to remember too, they're using child labor over there and, and in a way by ordering from them, you're supporting that. That's the only thing I have huge guilt about that is that they don't pay their people living wages. And yeah, we could get into that whole political thing, but yeah, it's just normally is a tad cheaper and more free shipping. Okay. Well, I might have to look into it, Melody, because I don't order a bunch from there. But, you know, I like browsing, that's for sure. So I don't know. I would say here's my free advice from this stream is if you have products that you would like to turn into a marker, do not hesitate to order the Crayoli, Crayola Marker Maker. I got it on Amazon for 13 bucks. I don't know. I would imagine... Between now and Christmas, you'll probably be seeing them in the stores, too. Um, so, yeah. And, Teresa, I will get with you about getting this stuff in the mail to you and figuring out, you know, how we're going to do the payment and stuff like that. But I'm not worried about it. So, but I will get in touch with you soon. What's today? Wednesday? I will try and get in town by Friday. So thanks for coming to my impromptu stream. Eileen, next time we're going to do foil with these stamps and see how they work because that was why I bought this was to see if I could do gold foil with the stamps. And now all the fun is over with and I have to cook, but... I am going to do watercolor this evening and try and do Dee Dee's challenge. So thanks so much for coming and being supportive and watching me. And um, yeah, I appreciate you guys more than you even know. So go have a fun day. Because that's what I'm going to do. See you guys. Oh, Eileen, answer Dorothy right now. Okay, I'm out of here.